Hi, I'm Jonathan Lagas and for today's video, I'm gonna be reporting the fourth generation of computer from the year 1960 to 1964. So my first topic is all about the microprocessor. So in this video, I'm gonna be tackling what does microprocessor mean. So what does microprocessor mean? So it is a computer processor where the data processing logic and control is included in a single integrated circuit or a small number of integrated circuits. So it contains the arithmetic, logic, and control circuitry required to perform the functions of a computer central processing unit. Every computer uses a microprocessor to do its work. The microprocessor is the heart of any normal computer, whether it's a desktop machine, a server or a laptop. There are many types of microprocessors. So just like the brain serves as the functioning mechanism in our body, a microprocessor serves as a functioning mechanism of a computer. So in other words, these microprocessors, the eye, are the brain of a computer. But not only the computer, also mobile phones and most other electronic devices that we may use in our day-to-day -day life. So, a micro microprocessor, also known as a CPU or Central Processing Unit, is a complete computation engine that is fabricated in a single chip. The first microprocessor was the Intel 4004, introduced in 1971. The 4004 was not very powerful. All it could do was to add and subtract. And it could only do that 4 bits at a time. But it was amazing that everything was on one chip. Prior to the 4004, engineers built computers either from collections or chips or from discrete components or transistors or what we call transistors wired one at a time. So the 4004 powered one of the first portable electronic calculators. Next, what does microprocessor do? Okay, so a microprocessor executes a collection of machine instructions that tell the processor what to do. Based on the instructions, a microprocessor does three basic things. So here are the three basic things that the microprocessor do. So number one, so using its ALO or what we call arithmetic or logic unit, a microprocessor can perform mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and also division. So modern microprocessors contain complete floating point processors that can perform that can perform extremely sophisticated operations on large floating point numbers. So number 2, a microprocessor can move data from one memory location to another. And number 3, a microprocessor can make decisions and jump to a new set of instructions based on those decisions. So next so what does large-scale integration or LSI mean? So it is the process of integrating or embedding thousands of transistors in a single silicon semiconductor microchip. So LSI technology was conceived in the mid-1970s when computer processor microchips were under development. So LSI is no longer in use. It was succeeded by very large-scale integration or what we call the VLSI and Ultra Large Scale Integration or ULSI technologies. So, so LSI defines the technology used to build powerful microchips or integrated circuits in a very small form factor. It succeeded small scale integration or SSI and medium scale integration or MSI which included tens to hundreds of transistors per microchip. So LSI consists of thousands of transistors that are closely embedded to integrated with a very small microchip. So one of the so one of the first components built on LSI technology was 1K bit RAM, which contained 4,000 transistors. Later components and microprocessors held up to 10,000 embedded transistors. So next, so very large scale integration or VLSI. So what, so what does very large scale integration or VLSI mean? So it is the process of integrating or embedding hundreds of thousands of transistors in a single silicon semiconductor microchip. So, so VLSI is one of the most used technology for microchip processors, integrated circuits, and component designing. It was initially designed to support hundreds of thousands of transistors gates on a microchip which as of 2012 exceeded several billion 
all of these transistors are remarkably integrated and embedded with a microchip that has shrunk over time but still has the capacity to hold enormous amounts of transistors. Okay. So next, LSI and VLSI. So large-scale integration or LSI is 300 to 3,000 gates per chip or 3,000 to 100,000 electronic components per chip. And very large-scale integration or VLSI is uh, more than 3,000 gates per chip or 100,000 to 1 million electronic components per chip. The present-day computers that we see today are fourth-generation computers that started around um, 1975. So it uses large-scale integrated circuits or LSI built on a single silicon chip called microprocessors. So due to the development of microprocessors, it is possible to place the computer central processing unit or CPU on a single chip. So those computers are called microcomputers. Later, very large integrated circuits or VLSI replace LSI. So ang large scale integrated circuits galid na aning VLSI. Next, the P4004. So what is that? The Intel 4004 is the world's first microprocessor. It was created by Intel with Ted Hoff and Federico Fagen as the lead designers and Stan Mazur and Masatoshi Shima as co-contributors. Co so the 4004 provided a new toll to the world. Up to that time, semiconductors and integrated circuits were built for specific purposes. So the 4004 was the first semiconductor device that provided at the chip level and the functions of a general purpose computer. So Federico Fagen signed the 4004 with his initials FF which can be seen at the lower right side of the 4004 chip. So next is um, Ted Hoff and Federico Fagen. So these two are a computer pioneers. Okay, so, so who invented microchip? So Federico Fagen, born on 1st of December 1914, is an Italian physicist, engineer, inventor, and entrepreneur. He is best known for designing the first commercial microprocessor, the Intel 4004. So, so the picture was used by Intel to promote Hoff, Ted Hoff, as the inventor of the 4004 and the 8080. So it was Federico Fagen who actually invented the K. MOS silicon gate design methodology and led the chip design of all Intel's early microprocessor 4004, 8008, 4040, and also 8080. Again, and his team created the 8080, the world's first second generation microprocessor with much higher performance than the first generation chips or the 4004, 8008, and the 4040. So the 8080 founded innumerable applications previously impossible and become extremely successful to be eventually superseded by the more powerful third generation Z80 CPU created at Zilog Incorporated, the microprocessor company founded by Fagin. So next is the IBM PC or personal computer. Is IBM PC or IBM personal computer? So it is the first microcomputer released in the IBM PC model line and the basis for the IBM PC compatible de facto standard. Released on August 12, 1981 and it was created by a team of engineers and designers directed by Don Eastridge in Boca Raton, Florida. So IBM enters the personal computer market as a response to the success of Apple. Departure from standard IBM practices Use of the shelf components from various OEMs, design an open architecture so other companies could produce and sell compatible machines. Hope to get royalties from licensing of BIOS, led by William C. Lowe and later Don Estridge. The first IBM PC was released on August 12, 1981, at a base price of $1,565. So IBM PC is the brand name of the first popular commercial PC developed by IBM Corporation. In 1981, the IBM PC was launched with model number IBM 5150 in an attempt to set an industry benchmark subsequent to IBM and several other computers. 